Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. And I say a very special episode because this week we are previewing the greatest race of them all, the Grand National at Aintree. A race that is watched by hundreds of millions of people around the world. A race that we should be incredibly proud of as a sport. Every year we have brilliant stories, nail-biting drama, but most importantly of all, we get to see our best equine and human athletes combining to to compete for the most prestigious prize in our sport. And of course, the other part that we should be immensely proud of are the modifications that Aintree Racecourse have made with the race to make it safer and safer year on year. No one cares more about the safety of the participants of this race than those who work within the sport. I myself was very fortunate to work in racing for many years. I sent out many horses to run in this particular race and I sent each of those horses out with immense pride, knowing that those horses were going to be at the centre of the sporting world for those few minutes to become household names. It truly is a magical race and something that we as a sport should celebrate as this is our shop window to the world. That's my part done, Declan, at least, anyway. No, lovely. <laughs> no, good words, good words. A very important uh, week for, for the industry. Uh, personally speaking, it's the race that kind of grabbed my attention when I was a young fella, um, although that was through betting, the medium of betting, because uh, my grandfather put five pounds each way on a horse called Papillon, gave me the winnings, and when I was that age, I think, about how old was I, 12 or 13, all I wanted to do was buy Man United jerseys. I could, buy, and I bought three Man United jerseys out of those winnings, so I was happy. But uh, that's the race that got me started. I'm sure it's, it's the race that's got many, many people started. Uh, as you said, that the industry should be proud, and entry should be proud. The BHA should be proud of the modifications to make the race what it is. It's still a great race, uh, and let's hope Saturday's one uh, will be the same. Very well said. Apart from the fact that you spent your winnings on Man United jerseys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to go off on a whole other tangent for that. But as you can probably see that Declan is with me in person. Unfortunately, we are not being joined by the other half of my punditry panel because Sam Boswell is up at Aintree himself. Sam, how is life up there? Yeah, very good. Rather appropriately, I can see just out my hotel window and filled with, uh, I think I've got a slight preference for over Declan's Manchester United, <laughs> but it's been a great couple of days racing so far. Loads to get stuck into. Excited to talk through Saturday's car with yourselves. Exactly. And I completely echo those sentiments. A view of Anfield takes precedent mm. all day long. So you're completely ganged up on yes. on this occasion, unfortunately. Surrounded by dirty reds here. What a terrible <laughs> start to the show. <laughs> Exactly. Well, wonderful for Sam and my part, at least. Anyway, now we're going to kick <laughs> off with the main event itself, the Grand National. This is over four mile two, coming up at 5.15, up at Aintree. As wide open a renewal as ever. Korak Rambler, though, currently the 13-2 market leader. Delta Work Lashes, third in at 8-1. Lashes winner, Noble Yates, 17-2. Then we have 12-1 to one bar about the remainder. So, Declan, how on earth do you solve the 2023 renewal? Well, you need an awful a lot of luck for a start but yeah I actually I came down on the end on uh, Lemilos just a price thing the whole week on the lead up to the race I'd actually been fancying Delta work but the weight of money behind him now has been incredible it looks like he could potentially go off favourite but Lemilos is the one for me I just love his preparation coming into the race he's only had three runs this year won his first started banger in tremendous style and then went to Newbury and won the prestigious uh, Coral Gold Trophy uh, form which is working out the runner up remastered has gone on to win. Uh, Korax Rambler, who was joint favourite for the race, he was back in the field that day as well. Uh, and then I, just, I like his prep. I know it's a bit counterintuitive that he was beaten, but it looked to me he shaped Miles, the best horse in the Premier uh, Chase at Kelso. Uh, clearly needed the run, but up until that kind of last, at the back of the last, he'd shaped like the best horse. Looked in good order. We know he's going to improve for that. Trained by a, a team who've had a wonderful season in terms of targeting big handicaps, uh, the Skeletons. Uh, Lamidas obviously won that big race earlier. Ashtown lad won over the won the beach earlier in the season over the entry fences and as well, you know, they, they cleaned up again at, at the Cheltenham Festival with Langer Dan and whatnot and uh, Fav War. So they've done really well. I think he ticks a lot of the boxes and I think just in terms of price compared to Delta Work he offers a bit more value. Oh, I like it then. Strong case it made early on though, Sam, for Declan Fuller, Milos for the Skeletons. So hopefully uh, post a British winner in this race, which we will happily take all day. But who are you siding with? Yeah, well, it's two to seven in our Grand National Specials for uh, an Irish Green winner. And that's where my selection has come down on. A lot of people who have watched this show before will know my love for Noble Yates. And 
I'm not prepared to desert him at this point in time. Um, I know he's up 19 pounds for the win last year, but I'm pretty convinced he's, conf- he's improved as a horse. Uh, I thought the run in the Gold Cup was, was pretty good, all things considered. Um, obviously, the ground is probably going to be very similar to when he won the race off 147. I think Sean Bowen is a, a plus point. Obviously, he, was, he did bust a lot of the Tratsons, uh, Statson's trends last year, but I, I'm fairly convinced he can possibly go very close to making it back-to-back winners the first since Tiger Roll. So siding with horses now to win this race back-to-back, Tiger Roll obviously coming back and doing that a few years ago, and this might just be the way that the race is going now. It's obviously a very different race to what it was previously. Is there a bigger fan of Noble Yates than Sam? No. I don't think every preview we've done for this show when he's running, he's put him up, so he's sticking with him again. I love it. The fact that you couldn't quite spell his name correctly, though, in our WhatsApp group yesterday might just <laughs> go against that. But maybe he might be able to win this race back to back. He is now feeling more of the trends this year than he did last year, though. And we talk about the trends for this race. I always run it. And that's why Noble Yates last year, he busted a fair amount of trends. But I ran him back against the trends again, looking back with hindsight now. He actually ticked a lot more boxes than I initially thought. Yeah. But again, I've run the trends this year and I could not believe it. Every single box that I was ticking throughout it, I thought this can't be going this way. <laughs> the big breakaway. Yeah. Came out on top of the trends for this race. Well, make your case. I oh, happily so. <laughs> so he's carrying the same weight as the winner last year of 10 10. He's the right age of eight. Four of the last seven winners of this race have been that age. Now, he is a horse where he stays all day. We know he has stamina in abundance. Touch wood, his jumping has been a real asset of his as well. His second on his penultimate start in the Welsh National stands him in brilliant stead for this. The biggest concern for him, ideally you want a horse that either won or ran well in a staying handicap chase or conditions race last time out. Obviously, he didn't have that. He pulled up in the Ultima behind the current favourite, Corrick Rambler. But he just never got into a rhythm there whatsoever. He is very much a flush or bust horse. I'll know my fate early on. Yeah. I don't mind the fact he's a behind the bridle type because we saw last year's winner coming from off the pace. So I don't mind if he gets filtered back through the field just as long as he can keep tabs bring that stamina and that jumping to the fore. Though. And as well, the first time blinkers might help him travel mm-hmm. a little bit sweeter, which I think could be a very good move. Exactly. We're hoping so anyway. So the big breakaway then for me, Declan? Yeah, it's going to be Lemilos for me, please. And Sam? Noble Yates is chairman of the fan club. <laughs> oh, they are the chairman of the Noble Yates fan club to win this race for the second year running. Now, we are going to talk later on about our one, two, three, four, hopefully in that order, and our selections for the Grand National. But we'll get to that in due course because we have a fair amount of grade ones still to be covering at Aintree on Saturday before we get to that point. And the first grade one we're going to be looking at is the Maghull Novices Chase, over two miles. And... I mean, Banbridge won on Thursday. He's declared to run again here. So it's interesting if he will take up this engagement here on this drop back down in trip. But currently this race is all about John Bond though, Sam. So is there any way to beat him? Oh, I mean, listen, um, probably not. But uh, you know, let's go back to that Warwick run. Obviously he got a major scare that day, but I think it's a completely different type of race than that obviously match against Carpio. Um, he's a really good horse. It's really great to see Nicky Henderson banging form of double on Thursday. And I think uh, I think he'll go off shorter than he is at the moment. I can see people really getting stuck in opening favour on uh, Grand National Saturday. Uh, and I think it'd be a good one to jump on. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, getting favourite back is off to at least a happy enough start, though, Declan. But we're not entirely sure if Bambridge is actually going to take up this engagement or not at this stage. But if he did, at least it would add a bit more intrigue. But we're not sure. Yeah, no, Will. I'd be very surprised if he if he ran out, to be honest. He's gone and won his grade one for the season, so he's he's, he's earned a break. He's earned his, uh, his freshen up out in, out in the grass. But, yeah, look, it's going to be disappointing if John Bond doesn't win. It's a disappointing race, if we're going to be honest about it. But um, in some ways, if you want to put a positive spin on it, it's good to see the Arkle form and the Turners kind of going to get mixed and matched here because obviously uh, not long till May is going to represent the Turners form. John Bong going to represent the, the Arkle form. He ran well in the Arkle behind El Fabiolo and let's be honest, El Fabiolo I think could be a real superstar of the game next season. I think his horse is only going to get better but at the same time I was a little bit disappointed with John Bong. I don't think he jumped as well as he could. Um, it looked like he maybe wanted to go up and trip as well. Uh, 
And the other thing is what, what I really didn't like is he logged badly left off the bend, didn't handle the turn well, logged left, and then he was hanging left as well the whole way up the straight. I don't think we saw the best of him. I, I, I'm hoping the return to entry on a flatter track will suit him. Uh, getting back on some better ground as well. Aidan Coleman said after the race he thought the tacky ground was against him. All those negatives that I've just mentioned there, that could explain that. But I know it's another grade one, but in theory, I think it's a, uh, it is a drop in class for him again. He's not going to meet the same horse or calibre here of El Fab Fabiolo. He showed last year when he just held off El Fabiolo, he could go from the Cheltenham Festival to entry. He backs up well. He's a stronger horse this year. Uh, very disappointing if he runs his race if he doesn't win. Yeah. If he runs his race, he wins, and he wins yeah. convincingly. And you have got other ways to play this, of course, from a betting perspective with length and your odds markets and such like as well, because yeah. I think we all are in agreement that John Bond is just going to take the world of beating here. You mentioned about the ground. It was tacky at Cheltenham. We heard, as we record on Friday morning, the ground yesterday. The jockeys, a lot of them were describing it as good pretty much, though. Yeah. So that should really suit him. He's a very fluent mover. Mm. And no disgrace whatsoever to the likes of Not Long Till May, who ran an absolute corker and continues to go from strength to strength yeah. for Laura Morgan, ran a blinder then in the turners at Cheltenham. But from the class ability, if John Bond is anywhere near his best, and none of these are going to get near him, as we know. So, yeah, we hope that we get Banbridge, but unfortunately, we're not entirely sure at that stage. But yeah. we're all in agreement, though, about John Bond in that grade one. On to another grade one now, because we're on to the Mersey Novices Hurdle over to mile four. And we have a good field size to go to war with here though Declan plenty of intrigue wide open contest to go with it as well so where did you land? Yeah I landed on Dark Raven here I think he should be outright favoured on the back of that Supreme I think the Supreme this year was a very good race uh, hopefully it works out I think Marine Nationale is a, is a very very good horse and I'm going to put my neck on the block I think in what we saw at Cheltenham I think he's at this t moment in time he's a better horse than Impere Pass but I do like, like Dark Raven I th he's, he's only had three runs this year and every single time he's gone to the track he's got better and better he's got a wonderful profile uh, and as well before the Supreme there was a flood of late money for him mm. which suggested that he'd improved at home and I think we saw that in the race as well travelled much sharper early um, little bit disappointed with the ride he got I thought it was very safety first it was you know he was three and four wide in, in lots of places look you're just not going to win races like that at, at Cheltenham but he ran very well he could have maybe finished third if you want to be kind about it the mist he made a very kind of strange mistake at the last he uh, he dived a little bit left and then he just kind of landed in a heap and he lost an awful lot of momentum but he ran well he took a massive step forward from the Dublin Racing Festival uh, at, with the way Cheltenham is falling with entry this year I think the horse have got just over four Four weeks to get over it so it's interesting he's coming here I think if he if he re reproduces that form he'll go well Chan I'm hoping he'll step up um the step up and trip could bring out a bit of extra improvement. He's by a stallion called Malinas out of an Oscar mare. And that's the same cross that uh, Master Mac Shee has, who's a proper two and a half miler. So I'm hoping he'll go well. I think he should be outright favoured on the back of a supreme run. We love Master Mac Shee. So that pedigree yeah. crossover is something that, like you say, we, we are very keen to follow in then. So exactly. The pedigree stats coming to the fore again then for Declan. Sam, who are you siding with? Yeah, I'm going to take James Snowden's mare, you wear it well, and not just because he's sponsored by Bet Victor, but I think she's got an absolutely outstanding chance. Um, she goes back up in trip and she shows that's no issue for her at stand down. I think she's actually more versatile than it may appear in terms of how she needs to be ridden here. Obviously, she chased home Hermes Allen at Newbury over Christmas, and I think he's a fantastic horse, but I can't be having him at four to one off the back of the run at Cheltenham. I would sooner be watching if I was a big fan and wanted to back him. I just think it's too short a price. But you wear it well, get seven off the boys. I think the way she won at Cheltenham shows there's more to come from her, and I really, really think it's back interesting going back up and trip. And uh, I know she's been working really well at home and really excited to see how she gets on. But yeah, I thought five to one. In what looks an open race, that's quite a tempting price. Uh, a cranberry for me was just another one to give a quick mention to. I thought a double figures. He could be interesting for Fergo O'Brien, who's already had a winner at Aintree this week. A really dominant winner as well on the Thursday, wasn't it? Very, very impressive. But sticking with Bet Victor ambassador, though, Jamie <laughs> Snowden, which fair play to you. You're always on brand, always on point, Sam. Is, we respect it? that a lot. Every time she's run, <laughs> Sam's put her up as well. And to be fair, he put her up for the Mayor's Hurdle anti post as well, if I remember he did. correctly. A, a big win. So credit where credit is due. Exactly. He got her right at Cheltenham, so perhaps he will get her right at Aintree as well. Now I'm going against a pair of you two. Wide open race, a horse that I have adored all season that many people have crabbed 
time and time again. Irish Point, I adore him here. He missed Cheltenham, but he did run on the Sunday prior to the festival where he managed to win a grade three novice hurdle at Nace. And he reverted back to prominent tactics there, which I was really pleased to see because he's been very versatile in terms of how they've ridden him this season. And many people use him as a sick to beat Marine Nationale with throughout the season, where I actually thought the fact that he got close to beating Barry Connell's horse was more of a compliment to Marine Nationale more so than anything else in the Royal Bond where we know that Marine Nationale fluffed the lasso still managed to get up but Irish Point proved his credentials over further again in the Lawlers of Nace running another solid race so he went to Leperstown just given a bizarre ride on that occasion he was dropped out he became detached just never got involved whatsoever so last time out making all then to manage to win his grade three I thought that was just a solid effort from him so coming here now on this uh, to over two mile four again should really suit him in and see him in a better light as well so Irish point still with more to offer for me but Sam uh, yeah it's you wear it well for me Kate and Declan? And for me, it's going to be Derek Raven, please. Right, and now on to another grade one. This is the Liverpool hurdle over three miles and 149 yards, where the staying hurdlers are back for more. Now, usually with divisions, we expect them to get easier to solve as we go through the season because a hierarchy <laughs> really establishes itself with the main pillars throughout the entire season. But not this lot, though. The longer the season has gone on, the more and more opaque it's become. Uh, so, I mean, Declan, whose turn is it to win this prize? Oh, who knows? Who knows? I suppose we'll find out Saturday. Uh, yeah, I was stuck between Marie's Rock here and Champ, actually, but I thought just at the price that I'd give Champ the nod uh, and the other fact as well, he's proven over this trip. Uh, Marie's Rock let me down at Cheltenham. She ran an awful race. I know it was a bit of a strange race and the mare's hurdle went no pace and she didn't get a, um, she probably didn't get that pace she likes to run at, but even at that I don't think she fired on the day. But Champ, I suppose the key with him is his record fresh. He's got a wonderful record fresh. He's run well. I know he's an 11-year-old, which you know people are saying, you know, I can't be back an 11-year-old in a grade one and I can totally understand and see that. But then at the same time, Sire de Burley, an 11-year-old, won the stairs hard at the Cheltenham Festival this year. It just goes to show like what a weak but open division it is but I just think Champ he's been laid out for this race um, He, the fire still burns because he beat Paisley Park earlier in the season in the long distance hurdle at, uh, at Newbury uh, travelled well looked bright jumped well maybe a little bit left but that's just, the, that's just him but under pressure his attitude is still there he, want, he still has that will to win hasn't run since um, uh, was it Kempton uh, over Christmas fresh of the race I like that trained by the right man in Nicky Henderson I would just say watch the market because the market got this horse spot on in the Gold Cup a few years ago where he ran absolutely dreadfully I would like to see a little bit of support I'll probably wait on the day and see how the market goes but champ for me Watch for those market clues, as you say, but coming here is the fresher horse and a lot of these horses who have been running in these staying contests and throughout the season, Sam. So are you siding with the fresh angle? Are you siding with kind of a battle hardened throughout the season angle or how are we playing it? Yeah, in total agreement with Death, actually, on champion. The record fresh is what caught my eye. Um, and also the fact that, let's be honest, is there anything in here that you would feel is particularly bomb-proof? I'd a great win at Cheltenham, but is he going to back it up at his age? Don't know. Flooring quarter for me, I've just been continually disappointed with now. Uh, Marie's Rock, don't want to touch her after that run uh, last time out. Home by the lead, had a great start to the season, but obviously I was left a little bit disappointed with him in the stairs. So that drew me to champ, really, and he will handle the surface if it dries out. There's so much to like about his profile. He's not bomb proof, but I thought around 8 to 1, it's a cracking each way price in a race where. I think you've got plenty of question marks about those shorter. Of all of the horses for you two to be agreeing on, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, it is a stayers division, so fair enough then. But the pair of you two then agreeing with Champ, I'm going against a pair of you two because I have unfinished business with Home by the Lee here. He's a horse who I have really liked watching throughout the season. I think he has improved throughout the season as well then because he managed to beat the dual reigning stayers hurdle champion earlier on in the season, as we said, prior to Cheltenham. And the way that he won those races, he just looked like an improved model because in the 
grade two Liz Mullen hurdle. He won that in really good style where he showed his lazy tendencies as we tend to expect from him. But JJ Slevin, quick to react. But those quick reactions were again highlighted at Leopardstown where he looked as though he caught connections by surprise and JJ Slevin himself, where as soon as he's got after him then, when he looked as though he was going to hit his flat spot, he's really picked up. He probably hit the front a bit too soon on that occasion, but still one in good style. Mm. I was slightly disappointed with him in the stairs hurdle at Cheltenham, but I can forgive that he made a hideous mistake yeah. at the sixth hurdle, really dropped his hind end through the flight of hurdles on that occasion. And then he kind of got a little bit blocked off when they turned into the home straight, yeah. but all he did was stay on to the line there where plenty of those were finishing legless at the end of it. They set the good pace from Florin Porter going out in front. He tracked that pace on, yet he was still staying on to the line. Yeah, he ran so well. He, d he did. After that mistake as well, that was a seriously, seriously bad error. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think they've had cheek pieces on him in the, before. I would have liked to see them have a go again. I'm just worried, could Aintree be a little bit sharp for him and get him out pace? But he stays so well, and there is lots of pace in the race, isn't there? Lots Lauren Porter's pace. back. Dashiell Drasher's going to have some first-time headgear on, which I think he's been crying out for at least mm. four years. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's gonna, it'll be a race run at a good gallop. Lots of pace, and that really long home straight. We know at Aintree they can get racing a long way out yeah. there. So I'm just hoping a long season for a lot of these horses. I still think Home by the Lee always saves a little bit for himself has a bit more up his sleeve. So they are our Stayers Hurdle selections. And make sure to let us know your own selections for all of the races that we have discussed in the comments below. Up next, we're going to be heading over to the Sky Pad where I'm going to get the lads' best bets for the weekend as well as their one, two, three, four for the Grand National. Now it's time to really establish some order with our best bets for the weekend. So we're going to be getting our nap, our next best, our long shot, as well as our one, two, three, four for the Grand National. So Declan, you are up first and starting with your best bets, please. Yes, the nap and the next best we've discussed already. Uh, the nap is going to be Dark Raven, Willie Mullins, Paul Town. And uh, I think he should be favoured on the back of that Supreme run, as we discussed. Uh, the next best is going to be Champ. Uh, keep an eye on the market. I think that's going to be key. We do know he goes well fresh. I'm hoping it's going be the case again here and then the long shot maybe just a 10 to 1 he squeaks in at a at a long shot but uh <laughs> i do like springwell bay in in the other the, the grade one as well i think this horse is a horse with a very big engine um the way he tanks through his race is to still be able to finish finish them out nicely uh it suggests to me there's a lot of raw ability there um he's finally i'm hoping going to get some pace to run it because he can be keen he can be gassy there looks to be a bit of pace on here i'm hoping that will help john joe O'Neill Jr. settle him and let him just get into a nice rhythm uh, and come through and maybe pick up the pieces late. Um, I'm not sure if our friends at Bet Victor are betting four places, but I think he's a sound each way bet. You know what, Sam? I was just about to pull him up on putting up a 10 to 1 shot for a long shot, but he's made a good case and in a wide open contest, having a few goes at that is probably the way to go, though. But on to your own best bets, please. Yeah, we'll let Declan off there, won't we? I suppose 10 to 1 on count. My long shot's going to be a bit bigger than that. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, you were at Wales going to be my nap. I refuse to desert her. She gets seven off the boys, and I think she'll turn that form around with Hermes Allen. Um, looking ahead, my next best, complete agreement with Deck on Champ, and he's going to be my next best for the, for the Saturday. I, I really am excited to see him here, and I think... Uh, I think Declan makes a fair point about the market as well, but I'm going to have to take my chances now, I think. I'm a long shot. Enjoy, Dallin. Did we all forget about this horse last year? Obviously, <laughs> his grandmaster run, he didn't get any further than unseating at first. But I really think he's obviously going to have been aimed at this race once again. He went off 20 to 1 last year for it. He's two pounds lower, albeit not shown too much with a couple of spins overheard. It was a shade disappointing, probably. But this is bound to have been the target. Kira Murphy, he might not be a household name, but he's an incredibly capable horseman. He's pre-trained for some of the biggest names in the game, and he's definitely got the opportunity here, thanks to JP McManus, uh, obviously taking the horse and letting him do what he needs to do with him. He's going to run here. He's 80 to 1. I think he's just a massive price. I will absolutely kick myself if he goes and wins at 80 to 1. And I haven't had any sort of money on him, though, <laughs> Sam, because I sided with him last year. He ticked all the trends boxes. I could not have been more confident going into last year's Grand National for him to unseat at the first, which you just feel oh, I didn't get a run for my money there whatsoever. So I'll have to have a bit of a saver on him this time around because it would just kill me if he goes and wins at that price. Now, my own best bet for the weekend. My nap is at home by the Lee. I have unfinished business with 
with this horse. So I have to side with him. He ran so well considering how much went wrong for him in the Sayers Hurdle at Cheltenham. He is, for me, still the most talented horse in this division. More to offer, provided he cuts out the mistakes, faces a bridle and is in a handy enough position inside the final couple of furlongs. To be able to mount his challenge and for his stamina to come to the fore. My next best is Irish Point. I adore this horse. I think that this is a correct trip for him over two mile four. Hopefully he can send Davy Russell out on a real high as he makes his return. And I still think this is a very talented horse, provided they ride him positively. And my grand national main selection is my long shot, the big breakaway, in the hope he can refer to the form of his penultimate start when finishing second in the Welsh national. All he did was jump and stay on that occasion. So provided he gets into that rhythm early on, then he should still be there in the finish. Now, Declan, I'm going to go back to you for your one, two, three, four for the Grand National. No pressure here whatsoever. Right, <laughs> National, one, two, three, four. One, we're going to go Lemilos. Two, we're going to go Delta Work. Three, we're going to go Longhouse Poet. And four, you've always got to throw one in, a, in at an outrageous price. It's going to be Sam Brown. Uh, we've already dis discussed Lemilos. Delta Work ran very well in the race last year. Uh, he's, I think he's one pound lower in the, in the handicap. And I think he's four pounds lower in physical weight, which I think will help him because he's not the biggest and most robust horse. He got a little bit too far behind last year and maybe ran a little bit inefficiently, making up ground from maybe four out to two out. And then that's all late. I think with a more efficient ride, he can go close. Close. Uh, very similar comments uh, are could it be applied to Longhouse Port? I thought he ran a belter in the race last year. Very kind of hedge hunter vibes, runs about him, comes back a year older, a year stronger, runs off the same mark, but again, he's a horse who's going to carry a little bit uh, less in physical weight. And then Sam Brown, this is a classy horse. Uh, he's been very hard to keep right throughout his career. I think he, he's an 11 year old. I think he's only run about 22 times. Uh, they were going to run him in the race last year, but. Uh, um, Connections, in their words, they said they bottled it. But he did go and bolt up at this festival last year. Remember, he beat Chamblou by about 15 lengths. If he's right and on a going day, I could see him running very well. Uh, so, yeah, those are the one, two, three, four for this year's national. And another one to stick in there at a big price as well. And for Declan, Sam, your own one, two, three, four. Yeah, enjoyed the next one, two, three, four. Mine's not amazingly different. I've got Noble Yates, of course, to win it. We've already spoken about him. But Laminos next made a really good pace for him and, and I think Kelton Horse would definitely be involved at the finish. Uh, and Harry had had that ride back at Kelso again. He'd be going in with an even more impressive record for the race. Uh, obviously, the long-term favourite has been Coach Rambler ever since after that win at Cheltenham. And I think he'll definitely be involved, but he is going to need a bit of luck with his run style and I just wonder if that could cost him the chance of winning the race. But if he jumps round, he'll definitely be in the finish. And then finally, my fourth is going to have to be Enjoy Allen, who I think is overpriced at 80 to 1. But best of luck to everyone that's having a bit at the National. Looking forward to hearing your 1, 2, 3, 4, Kate. I always want to go one, two, three, four, five. now. I've enjoyed Allen going, coming in there as a fifth because he hasn't made my top four, though, at present because my number one is a big breakaway. I almost can't believe I'm saying that out loud myself. But number two, then, is another horse I absolutely adore. This is Vanier or Vanillier, dependent on which commentator uh, says this horse's name. He's a correct age, running off of a feasible weight. is about the right mark as well. Another horse who stays has that bit of extra class for a horse that has more to offer, I feel. Then it's last year's third, Delta Work, comes here with the same prep, similar to Tiger Roll. Horse who relishes the different challenge that these spruce fences pose. And then I'm chancing Delta Work clearly to reverse the form with Noble Yates. So I'm putting in as fourth, still a young horse, and he's run two solid Grand National trials in his last two outings, including his fourth in the Gold Cup last time out. A class act, still only an eight-year-old. I am just concerned about the weight he's carrying this time around, hence why I've only got him to finish fourth. So if any one of our four manages to come off, you'll probably never see us again, to be completely okay. honest with you. We are really throwing it out there. But do let us know your own selections for the Grand National, your own one, two, three, four, as well as any other bets that you have across the weekend. That is everything from us on this very very special episode of Weekend Winners. A big thank you to Declan and to Sam for all of their hard work. Sam, continue to enjoy Aintree. No doubt that you will, and we will see you again next week. Hopefully, you will be able to join us again next week where we will be previewing the Scottish Grand National. So we will look forward to that.